we now need to explore the connection between the determinant and linear dependence. So let's start by noting that we've observed in our exploration of the determinant that a square matrix A is invertible when the determinant does not equal zero. So two important corollaries result from this that help us in the simplification process of finding the determinant of larger matrices. So the first corollary is that if the determinant of A is equal to zero, then the columns of matrix A are linearly dependent. So this proof is quick, and let's take a little peek here. So again, we'll start here by keeping in mind that a square matrix A is invertible when the determinant does not equal zero. So with this in mind, we want to reference back to the invertible matrix theorem that we saw in section 2.3. So we say by the invertible matrix theorem, we know that if A is invertible, then the columns of A are linearly independent. So if A is invertible, this is equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A are linearly independent. So again, thinking back to the conditions of the invertible matrix theorem from section 2.3, we know that all 12 properties of the invertible matrix theorem are logically equivalent, meaning that they're either all true or all false. So from this, we can then say, well, if matrix A is not invertible, then this is implying that the determinant of A is equal to zero, and so the columns of matrix A are linearly dependent. So we're now ready to go ahead and verify the second corollary. So our second corollary here is that if the determinant of A is equal to zero, then the rows of matrix A are linearly dependent. And again, we wanna start here by keeping in mind that A is invertible when the determinant of A is equal, or excuse me, is not equal to zero. And this is where A is square. We want to keep this in mind as we proceed in confirming this resulting corollary. So again, we can start here by the invertible matrix theorem that we saw in section 2.3. If A is invertible, then we know that the transpose of A is also invertible. A is invertible, then A transpose is also invertible. So we can further conclude here that if A transpose is invertible, then the columns of A transpose are linearly independent. So again, by the invertible matrix theorem, we know that if A is invertible, then A transpose is invertible. We also know that if A transpose is invertible, then the columns of A transpose are linearly independent. And since we know by definition 
that the columns of a transpose are equal to the rows of matrix A, then the rows of matrix A are also linearly independent. So by definition, we know that the columns of A transpose are equivalent to the rows of matrix A. I should say, by definition, since the columns of A transpose are equivalent to the rows of matrix A, then the rows of matrix A are also linearly independent. So again, thinking back to our invertible matrix theorem, we know that these statements are logically equivalent. So they're all either true or they're all false. So using these conclusions that we've recalled here, we can further say that therefore, if matrix A is non-invertible or non-singular, then the determinant of A is equal to zero and the columns, or excuse me, the rows of A are linearly dependent. And we know that the rows of A are linearly dependent here because the columns of A transpose are also linearly dependent. So we're ready to now use these corollaries in simplifying the process of finding the determinant of larger matrices.